your real estate market update for September 6, 2022. First off, congratulations to all the parents out there. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The kids are back into school, which means the real estate market's going to be picking up. But first, we need to go over last week's numbers, which were kind of the dog days of the summer numbers. Not a whole lot goes on the week before the Labor Day market, but we're going to talk about it because a lot went on in the mortgage market running up to the week of all Labor Day, right? I mean, interest rates just exploded. So we got to talk about that, plus some federal jobs data numbers that came out. And then we're going to talk about the month of August. It's come to a close. So what did the month of August look like for closed sales about the single family as well as condo markets? And what does that tell us as we come into the back kind of quarter, uh, quarter plus one month of 2022? We've really got a great picture of what ultimately the real estate market's going to be for, you know, what the story of the market's going to be for 2022. And then also there's some headline news that we just really need to go over so let's jump into that massachusetts single family data for what happened last week where their single family market we had 4743 units that were currently on the market now this is down 490 units again this is completely to be expected it was labor day week not many people put their houses on the market i should say a lot less um, and amount of people were interested in putting their house on the market right on Labor Day weekend, right? 602, 602 newly listed properties last week. Um, again, completely to be expected. 960 homes, single family homes went under agreement last week, which I thought was a pretty big number. And then we had 1,046 single family homes that closed last week for an average sale price of $732,000. Meanwhile, the median sales price was $600,000. And again, even though the sales under agreement agreements were down and the listings were down, right? All that data is down. We expected, because generally speaking, we see more sales happen towards the end of every single month. And our months of inventory, because our inventory levels fell so much, right? Obviously our months of inventory fell a lot too. And that fell to 1.19 months versus the 1.31 months that we saw just last week. Again, remember months of inventory, it's a temperature gauge in regards to what's going on in the market. The lower the number of months of inventory, the hotter the market, the more months of inventory, the slower the market, where seven plus months months is where we ultimately see a buyer's market. So let's jump over to the condo, condo data where we have 2,239 condos currently on the market. Now this is down 172 units from last week. We saw 235 newly listed condos come to the market with 330 condos went under agreement. What I found was really interesting in that 333 number is that it wasn't far off from the week beforehand's number where 353 condos went under agreement. That 353 wasn't a Labor Day weekend, wasn't a big national holiday as where 320 was. So kind of interesting thing to see in the condo market. We saw 398 condos sell last month, or last week, I should say, for an average sale price of $576,000 and a median sales price of $480,000. Meanwhile, that months of inventory that we talked about just a couple seconds ago, well, in the condo market, it actually dropped down to 1.43 months versus the 1.53 months that we saw just last week. And by the way, if you're curious and you're wondering, is there going to be a market crash? It's a great question. It's one that I get all the time. I have a, a video that I am releasing sometime this week where I go over the Massachusetts numbers to figure out, is there going to be a market crash? It's worth a look. If that's something that interests you, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, so let's jump into that mortgage market where I said it already. It was a rough week for mortgages, right? It, mortgage rates, they went up and they just flirted with those 2022 highs. We saw rates in the, you know, close to the six and a quarter up to six and a half, obviously dependent upon your credit score. We did get a lot of relief on Friday, which actually makes the week look a lot better than it really was. Um, interest rates fell nearly a quarter of a point on Friday alone. And that was ultimately because of our non-farm payroll numbers where jobs actually came in, 315,000 new non-farm um, jobs were actually created. The market was expecting 300,000. And ultimately what all this means is because the unemployment creeped up to 3.7% from 3.5%, but wages were up 0.3% versus the forecast at a 0.44%. So what all this means is basically <laughs> there's no change. Most likely the Fed's going to continue to be aggressive, continue to give us aggressive rate hikes, um, you know, as all the efforts that they've made so far haven't done their goals in slowing down the economy yet from what we can see right now. Obviously, we do have some GDP numbers that are going to come out soon enough, but 
as it looks right now from the continued strength in the labor market, the Fed's just going to have to keep on doing what they're doing. So now let's take a look at the August 2022 data for both single families as well as condos. Let's see what happened in regards to sales numbers in the August, in the eighth month of the year, right? As I said, you know, we're well into the back half of this year. So we're really getting a great picture for what's going on in 2022. So in the condo market, we saw 1,860 condos sell in August. Now, they sold for an average price of $619,782 and a median price of $499,900. Um, this ultimately means that we saw sales fall 22%, the amount of sales fall 22% in the condo market. But meanwhile, the prices were up 4.9% when you look at the average sale price and about 3% when you look at median sale prices. So, you know, it, it's really interesting that we're, we're starting to see that level out of the sales price um, year over year sales price data, which is exactly what I anticipated. I don't necessarily think sales prices are going to go down. I think they're just going to continue to, to, to level out and kind of stay in that zero to three percent range, um, which is something I actually talk about in that market crash video. But we saw 4,998 single family homes sell in the month of August of 2022, which is a little under 10 percent decrease in the amount of sales that we saw back in August of 2021, where 5,500 77 single family homes closed. Now the average price in August of 2022 was $751,000. That was the average sale price in all of Massachusetts for a single family home. And this was up from about $691,000 that we saw in August of 2021. So year over year price gain, we essentially saw 8.63% increase in the amount of sales price, right? That houses, uh, the appreciation rate, if you will, right? Now the month over month average sales price was actually down 2.31% when we compare the August number that we saw of the 751 and compare it to the July average sales price of 768,000. But I gotta say, I hate month over month data. It's absolutely useless. There, you just shouldn't be looking at it. I know people do all the time, which is why I give it to you. And I'm gonna make the note that in August of 2021, it was also a decline from the July 2021 number. This is why you just can't put too much credit into that month over month data. So what does all this mean? Like the average sales price and what we're ultimately seeing is that the year over year sales prices are starting to level off. They're starting to level off and decrease slightly, right? And that's the big part that we need to continue to keep our eyes on as we move through the rest of 2022 is it going to stay level or are we going to start to see it come down slightly and that's ultimately a big question in regards to interest rates how high do they go how much does it slow down the market right i personally believe that like i said earlier we're going to see in, uh, sales prices level off in 2023 i don't see them going down and this is the beginning of that leveling off is what i believe now, the sales numbers of about 5,000 units, right? People are out there saying that, oh my goodness, the market is crashing. But to put those 5,000 units in perspective that sold in August of 2022, for us to go back to the last August date, right, was August 2014. And that's when about 5,061 single family homes sold in the state of Massachusetts, right? So, so yes, I mean, it's, it's a low point for the last six years, but again, August of 2014, the whole 2014 year was a fantastic year for real estate. The, the world is not crumbling. The like Massachusetts market continues to remain strong. Now, inventory levels for single family homes in the state of Massachusetts, we ended August with 8,817 single family homes currently on the market. This amount of inventory is up from the 4,400 4, units that we saw back in August of 2021. Essentially, it's an 8% increase year over year in the amount of inventory that's currently on the market. Not earth shattering, right? I mean, it's an increase, but it's not really ultimately by that much. Now, August 2022, months of inventory was 1.11 months compared to 0.9 months that we saw back in August of 2021. I mean, yes, August 2022 was a little bit slower than August of 2021, but 
you couldn't go any faster, if you will, right? That was such a hot market. It couldn't really get any hotter last year than it was. So it makes sense that things are kind of slowing down. Now, ultimately, this low months of inventory, even at 1.11 month, month, months, right? It's up from 0.9. It is still signaling that it's a very strong seller's market. And that headline news that I spoke about, right? U.S., take a look at this headline. U.S. mortgage lenders are starting to go broke, right? Like, this is a very, very, very big and telling headline that we really need to pay attention to and ultimately see what's going to happen as the months unravel here, what's going to happen in the mortgage, ind mortgage industry. But the mortgage market shifted from banks giving loans some 15 years ago, right? From It was actual banks back in the 2006, 2007, 2008 run-up crash, right? And it shifted to independent lenders really controlling the market up to two-thirds of the top 20 originators in the country now the article notes that there is no systematic meltdown coming this time around because there hasn't been the same level level of lending excesses that we saw back in 2008 i think this is a very 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 important point uh, to make and to note, right, that the loans that have been given in the last 10, you know, 15 years, really, they've been really, really, really great no loans. The amount of borrower subprime loans has been little to none, right? Borrowers with credit scores under 620, a very small percentage of the amount of total loans that have been given in this run, in, in this period of time. Now, it's important to note that, however, these independent banks or I should say lenders going uh, bankrupt, right? This could trigger a spike in layoffs in an industry that employs hundreds of thousands of workers and ultimately could create a higher interest rate environment, ultimately by a bunch of banks going bankrupt, right? Or I should say lenders going bankrupt. I got to use that terminology, right? By a bunch of lenders going bankrupt, it would make less competition. And therefore, you might actually see interest rates increase for the consumer just because there isn't as much competition. Are you wondering if there's going to be a 2008 light crash coming at us soon? Do you want the data behind those statistics as to maybe why it is or maybe it won't? Well, then make sure you hit that like and subscribe button because that video is dropping this week. You don't want to miss that one. If you have questions or comments about any of this data that I talked about today, I would love to see it. Throw those comments in the section below. I answer everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, good, bad, or indifferent suggestions about things we could do. For example, last month somebody asked about multifamily data, right? Next week we have multifamily data coming at you because of that person's comment and suggestions. That's what I'm always looking to learn. Uh, if you want to talk real estate friend to friend, talk about your own specific situation, whether you're thinking about buying or selling, making a move down to Florida, whatever it might be, I'm here for you. Give me a call. Shoot me a text. You can find all my contact information in the, uh, the description below. And if you could do me a huge, huge, huge favor, if you could please hit like, if you could please maybe share this video with a friend or a family member who's thinking about making a move, thinking about buying a house, ultimately something that's their largest, most important investment, then I would truly appreciate it. So until next time. Phone call, email generally is the, the best way to get me. Um, that would be fantastic. And can you please do me a huge favor? If you could hit that like and subscribe button and maybe even possibly share this video with either a friend or family member who's thinking about making a move and might found, find this data that is ultimately the largest, most likely I should say, the largest uh, purchase that they're going to make in their lifetime, then I would truly appreciate it. So until next week.